I just took an amazing trade in crude oil futures, and I'm going to share it with you guys, show you step by step what I was thinking, why I took the trade, everything that you need to know so that you can trade just like me. So if you want to learn how to trade, let's get into it. All right. So let's go over this trade in crude oil that I took yesterday. So first, here are two screenshots just to show that I actually did take the trade. It wasn't a paper trade. It was in a real account. So we can see on the left. This is a screenshot of while I was actually in the trade. And then the screenshot on the right is once everything was closed and the final targets were hit. So you can see that I ended up getting in at 79.91. And then I had another buy limit at 80.18. So price ended up retracing from this point, coming down to this blue line, which is my buy limit. Ended up pyramiding, adding one more contract. And then my target is the sell limit up here. Right now it says one because I wasn't in on this trade, but once this trade was activated, then I had another sell limit up here. So my attempt with this trade review is to try and dumb it down, dumb down my process and help you guys better understand my thought process and the reasoning as to why I enter certain trades. So without any further ado, we're trying to make it any more complicated. Let's go over into the actual charts. All right, so we're looking at the daily chart. This is crude oil and I've been bullish. So if you've been watching the last couple of updates that I've done in crude oil, I've been bullish for about a week now in crude oil. And the reason why is we have this fair value gap right here. So why is this a fair value gap? Let me mark it out first. So these two black lines right here, this is your fair value gap. Why is it a fair value gap? Because the high of this candle doesn't touch the low of this candle. So that gap, that difference right there is what we call a fair value gap. So price comes down, we hit it perfectly. Notice how the wicks hit the bottom end perfectly and then we have the re reaction higher. Once we had the reaction higher and we created the swing low, so after the close on this day, June 5th, 2024, now we have a swing low because the low to the candle to the left is higher and the low of this candle is higher. So this is your swing low. Once I have that swing low, now I want to see what's the highest high and the lowest low within the last 20 days. So all I do is I use this tool right here. This is your data range tool. And then now we're just going to go to this day right here because this is the very next day after, after the swing low is made. So we go here and then we're just going to go back. So each bar is going to be a day. So don't focus on this number right here. I know it says 21 days, but this is counting the weekends. So we just want to only look at the actual trading days. So we're going to look at the bars because this is a daily chart. So each candle, each bar is going to represent a day. So if we go back 20 bars right there, now we are within this range right here. And let me use this tool. So in the last 20 days, after the swing high is formed, we're within this range. The highest high is going to be here and the lowest low is going to be here. So this is your range right here from high to low. And then I have a preset already made equilibrium and it's just gonna map out the high, the low, and then half of that or 50% of that range. So that is how I got to find out the range. Now, because we're on this day here, so what I'm going to do is actually get out I'm going to use the replay tool for a second. So I'm on this day. This is when my bias becomes bullish because we have the range from this high to this low and price is generally going to reach for equilibrium. So we haven't hit equilibrium yet. So this was on a Thursday. So on Friday, my bias now becomes bullish and we have all of these imbalances. What are the imbalances that we have? Well, we have a volume imbalance right here. And what is a volume imbalance? It's basically when the bodies do not touch each other. So remember, we had the fair value gap back here because the high of this candle did not touch the low of this candle. So that was a fair value gap. Now we have a volume imbalance because notice how the bodies of this candle and the body of this candle, they do not touch each other. So that's a different type of gap in price. So we have a gap that is above equilibrium. So price is most likely going to draw there. We also have more fair value gaps. So we have one here, fair value gap. It's small, but it's still a fair value gap. The low of this candle doesn't touch the high of this candle. 
Then we have another one up here. The low of this candle doesn't touch the high of this candle. So we have a lot of imbalances or gaps that price can draw to. And it's above equilibrium, which we call a premium. So right now we're below equilibrium. We are in a discount. We're expecting price to go from a discount to a premium. And it all started with price having a reaction at a level that we would expect, which would be the fair value gap. So now my bias is bullish. So now with that bullish bias, what am I doing? Okay, I'm to see on the lower time frame, does price give me an opportunity to get up to these levels? Then once price starts reaching up into these gaps and imbalances, I want to see does price explode through it or does it uh, touch and then start to go the other way? If we start to explode through it, then we're probably going to go for the high in the last 20 days. And then above that high is this fair value gap. So that is how I arrived at the bias that I got. And you're going to see for that trade that I'm going to go over in more detail, my target was this fair value gap. So now I'm going to get out replay mode. So this is the day that I actually took the trade. Tuesday the 18th, I did not take a trade um, on day. So this is the day that I took this trade. So now we can see, remember, I wanted to see is price going to hit these key levels and go the other way, or are we going to explode through it? Well, here we explode through it. So now that we have exploded through it, now my next target is going to be this fair value gap. Well, we hit the fair value gap and now we're starting to have wicks here. So I, at time, I don't know, are we going to go for this high or are we going to reverse and come down lower? I'm not sure. So I'm going to delete these levels. We wick through these and then on Monday we explode. And then on Monday we explode through it. Now, when we explode through this last imbalance before this high, now I feel pretty confident that price is going to take out this high and reach up into this imbalance here. And now you might be thinking, okay, for the fair value gaps, I thought it's only from uh, the wicks. So like from candles low to this candles high, but if you look closely, I have it on this candle's body because we also have a volume imbalance because the bodies do not touch each other. So I'm combining the both different types of gaps to create one super gap, if you want to call that. So price is most likely going to draw there. So because we haven't taken out the high or hit this level yet on Tuesday, my bias is now bullish and I'm expecting price to go higher. Right. So now. Now it starts, right? This is the opening of the candle right here. So we're going to call that. We're just going to know the purple line is the opening for Tuesday's price. Now, one of the other concepts that I teach is that if you want to be a buyer, the best buys are going to happen at or below opening price. So just remember that when I drop down to the lower time frame. So now that we have our bias, we know what the opening price is. We know we want to be a buyer. Now, ideally, it's going to be below this opening price. So now we're going to drop down to a four hour chart. So this is the opening price based off of the daily chart. Now, on the four hour chart, we can see that. So Thursday starts on this candle right here. I mean, sorry, not Thursday. Tuesday starts on this candle. And we can see right here on Tuesday in this candle, we drop down into what? Another fair value gap right here. So we have the four hour fair value gap and we're going to make that one gray. So we drop down to the four hour fair value gap. Now, if we measure the fair value gap from high to low and we find the quadrant levels, which is basically 25%, 50% and 75% of that fair value gap, we can see we hit it perfectly. We hit 25% and then we have the reaction. So this is happening. This candle starts at 2 a.m. This is a four hour candle up here. So that means this candle is going from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. So I'm not trading crude oil. I like to trade it from 8.30 to 11. That's my ideal time to trade. So when 8.30 is starting, we're within this candle here. So I'm already seeing the reaction at this fair value gap. I know that we have targets up here. So I feel pretty strongly that this is going to be the low of the day and that we're probably going to continue higher. So now we drop down to a 15 minute chart. So now looking at the 15 minute chart, we hit that 25% level here. This is at 4.30 in the morning. So we're doing that during the London session. 
London session is from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. So we're hitting it during a good time of day. Then we have these consecutive down close that ran us down into that. So that is going to be our bullish order block. So now we're going to draw a rectangle on the bullish order block. Let's make it blue. And then for me, for, for me, when I consider a bullish order block activated is when we close above 50% of the highest wick. So right there, that would be 50% of the highest wick of these down closed candles. So now our bullish order block right there. So right here on this candle, 715, when we close above it, that now becomes a bullish order block for me. Now, if we look closer, we are also taking out this high and let's make it a little bit thicker so you can see it. So we take out this high. So we take out buy side liquidity, this high right here, and then we trade lower to take out this low. So we have taken out both sides of liquidity. We've ran higher, taken out the buy side. We ran lower, taken out the sell side right here. Then after we take took the sell side, we ended up rallying higher and going above these highs. So now we have this bullish order block. This candle, closed candles, is now a breaker. So we have a 15 minute breaker right here. Why is it a breaker? Because we've taken out both sides of liquidity. We took out buy side right here and we took out sell side right here. If breakers are confusing you, I have a video dedicated to all the different types of key levels in the Omni model course. It's completely free. So go check out that video and you can learn more about all the different key levels. I talked about breakers, order blocks, fair value gaps, how I use 25, 50, 75% of the level volume imbalances and the list goes on. So now that I have a breaker, I have a fair value gap right here. Now what I'm going to do is turn on this and this is just going to give me the times of days that I like to trade. So I have Asian range, which is going to be from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. And then I have London, which is going to be from 2 to 5 a.m. And then let me make sure I have, there it goes. Yep, so London's 2 to 5 a.m. And then the pink shaded area is London or New York open, which is from 7 to 10 a.m. And then we have London closed from 10 to 12 and now remember I said the best times to trade, in my opinion, for crude oil is going to be from 8.30 to 11. So you got half of London closed and about half of New York open. That is like the sweet spot for me um, to trade. And why is that? Because on most days, there's going to be some economic report that comes out at 8.30 and then the market is going to move to where it needs to move. And because of that, the algorithm is designed to go towards certain pools of liquidity or different types of fair value gaps and imbalances starting at 830. Even if there is no news at 830, the algorithm is designed to move at that time more times than not. So now the reason why I put this on is just to show you that we're hitting the breaker in the order block during the right time of day. So now I'm going to take this back off going to delete the order block because once we have the breaker we ideally do not want to see price close below the breaker so now let's go to a five minute chart so initially price came down into this fair value gap right here so we had these this low right here and i was not expecting price to go below this low and really this low right here because they are on the outside of the breaker so on the five minute chart, we have swing lows outside the breaker of the 15 minute breaker. And actually let me label it so you guys do not not get confused. So 15 minute breaker, and then let's put the plus sign so we know it's bullish. So we have the 15 minute breaker and then we have this imbalance right here. So we have that imbalance right here. We hit it here, but notice how it's 7.35 a.m. And then we hit it again at eight o'clock. And then we also hit it again right here at 835. So we're hitting it a couple times. So here, when we hit it, I'm expecting price to start to go higher. So now when I drop down to the one minute chart. And so we were hitting the level right here on the one minute chart. And then we started to rally higher. So all I did was draw my fib from this low to this high. Now for the fib, 
I have a preset that is called OTE and I'm going to double click on it so that you can see the exact settings that I have. But all I have is we have zero, which is going to be the low or we have zero, which is going to be the high. And then we have one right here, which is going to be the low. And then we have 50% of the line right here. So the black dotted line, 79, 71. In this case, it's 50% of that range from this low to this high. And then these orange dotted lines are going to be 61.8%. So in decimal format, that's going to be 0 0.618. And then we have 70.5% and 79%. These are levels that are designed in the algorithm that price will more times than not gravitate towards. But at the end of the day, we only need price to come back to equilibrium because that would put us in a discount. If you remember what I was saying on that daily chart, how we were below the equilibrium line, that means we're in a discount. And when you're above the equilibrium line, it means you're in a premium. So if you want to be a buyer, because our bias is bullish, you want to wait for price to come back down into a discount on whatever time frame that you're trading on. So because I'm trying to enter on the one minute chart, I need it to come back down to equilibrium and that's going to be my entry. So my entry is at 79 or 79.71. It's at equilibrium. We're also within this fair value gap because the high of this candle doesn't touch the low of this candle. Now, more advanced theory, the fair value gap really starts at this down close candle, but I do not want to confuse you guys. You can just use the entire um, range from this high to this candle's low. That was the fair value gap I was using. We hit equilibrium, so I entered here, and we can see price started to rally in my favor. And remember, I'm trying to target this black line, which was that fair value gap on the daily chart that was above the liquidity, which is this blue line. So zooming back in, that was my entry. Ended up getting stopped out. That was the first three contracts because I got in for three contracts here. Ended up getting stopped out. No big deal. Oh, one last thing. For the FIB, the reason why I'm not drawing it from this low to this high, because that's what you'll see a lot of people do. I'm using this low right here because the body of this candle, so if I delete it, the bodies of this candle do not close below the low of the candle. If the body was to close below, then I would use this low. But because the bodies don't close below, then I can use this low. Remember, the bodies always tell the story. The wicks do the damage. You always want to pay attention to the bodies of the candle. So that is why I picked this low. So, okay, get stopped out. Go back out to the five-minute chart because that's what I'm doing. I get stopped out. I want to zoom back out, see what's really happening. So I want to see, are we going to end up closing below the breaker? And I'm wrong about this uh, target for the being. It might come to it later in the week, later in the day, whatever the case may be, but we may need to trade lower and go for um, deeper into this fair value gap that we had and maybe hit 50%. So that's what I'm looking at, but we can see we trade lower, but look how the bodies do not close below this fair value gap. So let's make it, there it goes. So remember the fair value gap was from the high of this candle to, in this case, it would be the body of this candle because we have that volume imbalance right here. But notice how the bodies do not close below it. The high of this candle. So if we look up here, you'll see a OHLC stands for open, high, low, and close of the candle. So when you hover over any individual candle, those numbers will change. So when I hover over this candle, the high of that candle is 79. 0.57. If we look at the close of this candle, so that would be the body and then the open of this candle, but you really want to focus on the close. It can open below it as long as it doesn't close below it. So the close of this candle is 79.57, the exact level of the high. So we don't close below it and then we start to rally higher. So this is just showing me that I rushed my stop loss too early. My stop loss should have stayed below this swing low, which was outside the breaker, but no big deal. You make mistakes in trading. It is what it is. Bodies don't close below. We start to rally higher. So now I'm dropping back down to the one minute chart. So now this is that area. Yes, on the one minute chart, we close below it, but not on that five minute, which is more important. The higher the time frame, the more important it is. So we start to rally higher. So now if we draw our fib from this low 
to this high. Equilibrium would be here. So anything below that would be a discount, which is good for buying. We have a fair value gap. This low doesn't touch this high. We have um, the difference in body. So we have volume imbalances here. We also have a fair value gap here because this high doesn't touch this low. So we have a bunch of discount fair value gaps that we can buy in. But because I just got stopped out, I'm personally not trying to buy here. I want to see it hit the fair value gap and start to go in the direction that we want to see it go. So I'm waiting to see the reaction. We hit the fair value gap and then we have this explosion right here. So once we have the explosion, then we drop down into this volume imbalance and we start to run. So at this point, I'm pretty confident that we have done all of our damage down here and now price is going to start moving quickly towards these uh, targets. So now once price starts to do that, we had this retracement right here. We start the rally again and then we have a fair value gap right here. So the low end of this candle is, if I click off of it, the low of this candle is 79.90. So as soon as we hit the low of the candle, I'm going to buy. But now we have spread in Forex. So if I'm buying at 79.90, they're going to get me in at 79.91. So that is why I got in at 79.91. Because I saw the retracement. We had gaps down here. And then we explode up above it. Closing above this down close candle, that becomes a bullish order block. And if we put a line on that, we can see we hit it perfectly. We wick into it right there. But I ended up getting in right at the low of this candle. So I pretty much had no drawdown on this trade. Yes, I did take some losses before. But on this specific trade, I ended up having no drawdown. So now, once I'm in the trade, my stop loss was down here. Target is going to be just a few ticks below the daily fair value gap. So I had it at, I believe, 80.55. The fair value gap is at 80.57. So just two ticks below. Now price starts to rally, right? We get above this high. Now I'm zooming out to a five minute chart. So now if we go over, we have this high right here, right? If we go all the way out to the left, the up close candles that make up that high is going to be right here. This is going to be your up close candles. And I'm just going to extend that to the right. So this is like a bullish breaker. You run out all this buy side, come all the way down, run out this sell side, and then we eventually close above it. So it's an elongated breaker, but it still works the same way nonetheless when there's such a clear target just above it. Now, if there wasn't a clear target, then we're not trying to use that as a breaker. We've already gone too high to try and chase price. But because because we have a clear target, then we can do that. So we close above that blue line, which is the high. And then now this red box is that breaker that we just saw. We have fair value gaps within this breaker. So when we stab back down into that, I'm going long. Now I went long right at 8018 right there. That is when I went long. And then let's just, let's make it blue. That is why I went long. Now, I didn't just randomly pick that level. If we drop down to a lower time frame chart. So first let's drop down to a one minute chart. And so actually I'm going to use a 30 second chart. So remember this red box was that five minute breaker. And all I did was we had this swing low right outside the breaker. Draw my fib again from this low to the high that we had. We had equilibrium right at 8021. And then we had optimal trade entry right at 17. So because my entry is going to be right at 8017, ideally, all I'm going to do is just move it up one tick higher just for the spread. Sometimes if it was to just hit 17 only and it hit it really fast and went the other way, um, the broker might realize your entry and you will miss out on the move. So if your entry is going to be at 8017 in this scenario, just put your buy limit at 8018. And that is what I did. So buy limit there. Stop loss is going to be ideally here. And then the target is going to be up there. So we had a 2.4R for this trade. And then we had a 2.3R for this trade. So we combine that. That is four for the day after taking a small loss on this trade. So this pays out more than enough to not only cover this, but for you to be in good profit to end the day. And then... Just to wrap it up, we can see that 
it went a little bit higher into the fair value gap, but this fair value gap was clearly the target for the day. And this was the high of the day. And then we ended up going above it. Um, actually, no, this was the high of the day. Yep, 225. But still within that fair value gap, high of the day. And we've been consolidating within this gap ever since. So I hope that this, I know it was long, but I hope that it was uh, clear and that you better understand the reasoning as to why I take certain trades. I know it's a lot, but I've been doing this for some time and just give yourself time. And once you have done it, over and over and over again, it will become like muscle memory and all these different points that I'm bringing up. You'll think about it and filter it out when making your decision. So like I said, I hope it was insightful and I will see you in the next video.